hello there good morning i hope you're doing well that you're having an awesome day today thank you so much for being patient with me and filming um my makeup bag recap my makeup bag for october it has been nuts every moment i've had for the past couple weeks i've needed to dedicate to studying for midterms oh those were brutal um, but now that is passed, I'm ready to um, be able to enjoy life again <laughs> and um, be able to film some videos. So I started filming like my makeup bag recap video yesterday. I had way too much coffee. It was very all over the place. So what I've decided is I'm going to do kind of a crossover video and we'll just talk about everything kind of all in one what I used last month because my goals really shifted. Um, I started off kind of thinking I was going to do several looks at the beginning of the month and then I really just got that last minute push um, to finish strong for the hashtag it's been emotional project pan and then was studying for midterms and classes and everything I really just I needed a makeup routine that I did not have to think about and so I didn't venture too much around my collection. And then in terms of October, I picked quite a few things that I ended up putting back into my backup stash because they just weren't driving with me for the moment. So I think I've gotten a cohesive kind of plan going. This is the look I'm really gonna focus on for October. So I will go on and put the get ready with me up in the card above and in the description box below if you're interested because i've really just been i've missed this look i wore it several months ago it's a really smoky warm red look um using if you have the cap on dimi vita look a remix palette i really focused around the shade rewind now i'm wearing raw power i've just been i've missed wearing these frames i've missed having the red eyeshadow we're in fall i'm embracing it so every day is a treat um to put on my makeup so Let's go on and get started. In terms of what I got through last month and what I'm going to be switching now, foundation primer. I really use the snot out of this Becca First Light Perfecting or First Light Instant Complexion Refresh. This the title of this is obnoxious. It's it's so long, but this is really really awesome as a primer. I love mixing it in with my foundation. This is something I'm going to repurchase whenever I run out of it because at this point, I think I used it three months in a row three, maybe four. I don't remember. Um, I'll have to kind of go back and look, but I think if I just give it one more month, I'm going to go on and just finish this out of my collection and be able to repurchase it because I love it that much. In terms of a brightening primer, this is definitely my holy grail. However, that being said, now that we're getting into more fall weather, I prefer a more matte finish to my makeup. And so what I have done is I've taken the airless pump that I used for a foundation when I depotted my Rimmel, and I've used the LA Colors silicone primer, and I've just thrown the couple of tubes that I had in here, and I'm going to see how much I can finish out of this in a month. Um, basically, I, I love the application of this um, pump. I just take one pump on the back of my skin um, with a little bit of foundation and I really get a beautiful coverage without having to worry about using too much or not using enough. And it's just like a smooth canvas to work with. And so, like I said, this airless pump I found for like 10 or $12 on Amazon. And I was able to put in, I think it was like two two tubes of the little LA Colors um, primer, which comes in tubes about like this. And I think I have one more in my backup stash. So I figured this would be an awesome way to kind of get through some more primer out of my collection, to be honest. Okay, then in terms of foundation, I was able to finally finish a tube of the Maybelline Dream Velvet Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation in the shade Nude. I am moving a backup tube of this in for October because the color works okay for me right now, but as my skin loses any glimpse of a tan, it's not going to work for me. So I went way too crazy and I bought backup tubes of this when I realized that Maybelline was discontinuing this formula because this is probably my favorite drugstore formula at the moment. And so it was really, really bumming me out. And now I'm trying to get through the backup tubes of foundation. So lesson learned, I'm not gonna be doing that in the future. I'm just gonna buy foundation as I need it. And if they discontinue it, oh well, that means there's another formula that is gonna be just as fabulous, if not for more fabulous for me to discover. So I'm excited to just kind of recirculate another tube. And the other reason I chose another backup tube of this foundation is because I know that this works well with a silicone based primer. It worked well with the brightening primer, but it also works well with the silicone primer. So I don't really have to do a whole lot of guesswork with that. 
Then, in terms of eyeshadow primer, I started working on my Milani eyeshadow primer last month. I'm going to want to continue rolling it into this month. So, easy. I love it. It's, it's great to find something that is cruelty-free at a drugstore price point. It works just as well. Um, I haven't had too much fading with my eyeshadow. I do notice that when my hormones are kind of like doing their ups and downs, um, the lasting capability is kind of on a wave of things. Like, does that make sense? Um, but overall, I am very happy with the way that that primer performs. So we're just gonna we're gonna go with it and keep keep enjoying it. Then um, powders. I was able to finish my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Mood Light last month. I really went. Um, for the, the finish with this, with the hashtag it's been emotional project pan, I really adored this powder in particular with the eye look that I wore because it just, it gave me such a glowy, um, ethereal luminosity to my skin. Did that sound redundant? Um, but it was just, it was beautiful. I loved the finish of this on my skin and I noticed after I finished this powder, I didn't like the eye look as much. Isn't that funny? So this is definitely something I might put on my radar um, to purchase again in the future, but I'm ready to move on and try other things. So that being said, I started off the month, I wanted to incorporate the Too Faced loose powder in the peach, the peach powder. The, the smell was a little too intense because I've decided to pan. Actually, let's go on and talk about this. So Along with the peach powder, I was using my Franken bronzer. I've been using this for quite a while because I love it. It's very similar to the Becca's Gradient Glow. I loved, love, love the finish of that, and I love the red tone of the bronzer. However, with this red look, it's a little too much to have a red eyeshadow and then a red bronzer and then a red lip. It's just, no, no, no. So I decided to throw in my sample of the Too Faced uh, Chocolate Soleil because I've already hit pan in it. Um, but when I put on the peach powder and then I put on this chocolate powder, it was just like, no, absolutely not. I, I could not stand the scent of those two things together. It was overpowering, it gave me headaches. And so I decided to go on and put the peach powder away for a while and go on and try to finish what I can out of this bronzer. Cause I mean, it is just a travel size. I've hit pan in it. Um, I do use a fluffy brush and so it shouldn't be too bad. I like the, the formula of this bronzer. I'm not really crazy about the scent, but it does a really nice job all over the skin. So I'm just going to go for it and try to finish it. And it gives me a chance to swap out some bronzer for a while. So, oh my gosh, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, how crazy would that be to have like the peach powder and then use the chocolate soleil bronzer and then put the gingerbread palette on your eyes? Like, Oh my goodness, scent overkill. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Let me know if you've ever tried that combination before because that would just, now that I'm thinking about it, whew, that would be a lot. It would be a lot to take in. So moving on to the powder that I'm actually gonna be using for this month. I pulled out this Clarins Everlasting Compact Powder. I received this from Octoly a few months ago. I really love the finish of this powder. It's just really light, really fresh, easy. It works well with that Maybelline foundation. So. I'm going to work with it, see what I can do. I have not hit pan. I don't expect to hit pan, but it'll be nice to get some use out of it. So I do really like the formula of this powder, and it's fairly easy to work with, and it doesn't look cakey on the skin as long as you don't apply too much. If you apply too much, it gets really crazy really quickly, but always good to know. You know, kind of slow down and relax through applying makeup. Don't try to do it in a rush. Then um, going into brow powders, or not brow powders, brow pencils. Last month, um, on days that I, uh, you know, would work out or if I didn't want to wear brow powder or whatnot, I would go for this It Cosmetics Brow Power in Universal Taupe. I have finally finished it. Well, it has a little bit of product left, but it's not enough for me to roll up and really use um, on both my eyebrows, so I'm calling it done. I really do like this um, brow uh, pencil, however... I've realized that I like this one a little bit more, and this is a drugstore price point. This one that I'm phasing in is from CoverGirl. It is the Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in the shade Soft Brown. This is really, really nice. Um, I actually have it on my eyebrows today. Um, it is a fairly soft formula. It's, I would say it's pretty dupable to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. Just kind of putting it out there. The brush isn't as fluffy on the end of the pencil, but I'm really enjoying this formula. So 
I'm excited to phase this in. And then the other thing that I was doing with my brows last month is I was going through with my MAC Mariah Carey Quad in the shade I'm That Chick You Like. And I was going through with this Espresso Brown and I was able to finally hit pan in it. I'm going to continue working on it, but now basically I'm using this brown to deepen up my outer corners of my eyeshadow look and I'm also going through with it as a liner. So it's gonna be kind of nice to get a little bit more use out of that. So kind of moving on. Then we go into shadow bases. Last month I really made a lot of progress with my NYX um, uh, jumbo eyeshadow pencil in the shade Cashmere. It's just a really pretty kind of champagne color. It looks like this because I was going through with the Legend shade from my Kat Von D Maybe to look a remix palette, which is a really um, bright and gold. And when I finished that, I actually went through with the gold out of this palette right here and I was able to finally hit pan. So that was a good feeling. Now in terms of eyeshadow, I'm going to be going through this month. This is not an eyeshadow base. It's actually a concealer pencil, but I don't like it as a concealer pencil. It is the NYX Hydra Touch um, Illuminating Pencil. I don't know, like I've sharpened it past the point of being able to see the title, but it's just a matte skin tone concealer as you can see like with all that yellow in it it's kind of creepy looking on the skin to use it as concealer but I love it as an eye base and I'm going over the top of it with my Too Faced Sugar Pop palette in the shade uh, Peach Fuzz down here this is what I have all over my lids so my goal is to see how much I can finish out of this by the end of the month I really love it mixed and, and kind of one of the things that surprised me about this look with the peach and the red and the orange and kind of the highlighting shade is it was all shades that I really thought would never work for me and now I have them all combined in one look and I can't get enough of it. So kind of fun, fun find with project panning, you know what I mean? So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how much I can use out of that. Then in terms of transition shades, I really went in for my Naked 3 palette last month because it was in the hashtag it's been emotional project pan. And so my transition shades that I used were Limit and Nooner. I would mix these two together because I really wanted a mauve um, vibe to my look. So I'll go on and link that get ready with me in the card above and in the description box below um, because I really just, I loved it with the mauves and the golds and then kind of a pewter in the outer corner. It was just wonderful. Loved, love, love that look. And so I went through with the transition shades and then in terms of highlighting, I started off using Snow from my Lorac um, Pro 2 palette and when I finished it, I ended up going into Strange um, from my Naked 3. And what I do with this is I mixed it. I started off mixing it with Muse from my Kat Von D palette. When I ran out of Muse, I went on and made a Franken shade. And these two together give a very similar effect to the Becca uh, Prismatic Amethyst highlighter. Is that what it's called? The, the purple-y highlighter from Becca. It's a beautiful finish. I loved using this on my eyes, on my brow bone, on my inner corner. I used it as a face highlight. That's how I got through that shadow. These two are just stunning together. So let me show you what that purple shadow looks like real fast so that you can see because I don't have it in the Kat Von D palette anymore. So if you have any of those lilac purples in your collection that you're kind of looking at, you're not sure what to do with it, try mixing it in with a like a shimmery white shadow. It's a beautiful finish and it might give you something that you just adore wearing, having kind of a duochrome effect done right there using everything that you have shopping your stash. And the base that I used under it, I went through with my NYX Faux White Eyeliner in the shade uh, White Smoke. I actually finished this pencil. It got down to the point where I couldn't sharpen it anymore and so I moved into another pencil. What I do with this is I um, put it into my inner corner and then I use a little bit on my brow bone and then go over with that white purpley duochrome shadow and it's just a beautiful finish. It really kind of amps up the lilac in that pencil. So just kind of tip for thought if you're wanting to do something to shake up your makeup, maybe, you know, zhuzh up a, a neutral look and do kind of a zingy highlighter. It's a lot of fun. So since I'm done with a purple look for a while, I'm going basic. I'm going back with my NYX uh, Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in the shade White um, to really amp up my highlight. And the highlight I'm going for, I really wanted to mimic this shade. <clears throat> I think it was Mulder. I think that's the dupe that I made, but it was this shade from the Kat Von D palette because I loved it with this particular red look. And so I made a Franken shadow using Kat Von D's Thunderstruck mixed with, uh, I think it's two other shades. I don't remember off the top of my head. I apologize. I, I have no idea what I mixed in here, but 
the shade I ended up with um, is dead on with what I had of Mulder. So I pressed it into this Becca um, Gradient Glow um, pan that I finished with the bronzer and I'm using this as a highlight on my eyes and my inner corner and I'm also using it as a highlight on my face because I thought that would be a fun way to kind of get through this eyeshadow and really harken back to that look I loved. So this is going to be the highlighter I'm using instead of going with Strange. And then going in for crease shades. I started off um, last month kind of mixing things around. I used my Lorac Mega Pro palette for a few times. Not enough to really make a difference in that palette, so I'll show that at a later date. But um, when I went in for the, you know, to see what I could do with my Naked 3, I really went in for these three shades right here. And what I would do is I would tap my brush between Factory Liar and Mugshot and then apply it into my crease area. And as you can see, I finally did hit pan with Mugshot. I adore this color. And it's the closest dupe that I could kind of come up with that was similar to Pewter from the Lorac Pro palette if you're wanting um, a way to kind of multitask your Naked 3 and, and make it maybe a little bit less less pink <laughs> um, considering the rest of the shadows in here are pretty intensely rose but I really love that combination and so now what I'm going to be going through and using and, and we'll see if I can finish it but I'm going to be using Cap on D's Raw Power that is what I have going on in my crease today and then in terms of bright or I mean I'm deepening up my outer outer third outer corner whatever you want to call it since I've hooded eyes it's it's a pretty small space to deal with um, I did go through with my matte black out of my Lorac Pro 2, so um, I made a ton of progress out of that shadow. That is a satisfying feeling. I would use this in my outer corner as well as on my lash line over the It Cosmetics um, Liner Love Waterproof Anti-Aging Gel Liner. I always set my liners just because with my hooded eyes it transfers. It doesn't matter how great the formula is. Um, these two in combination were lovely, so now I thought that the black was a little too much, a little too harsh with all the red, and so I'm back into one of my favorite liners, my MAC Pencil in Costa Riche, which is just a very deep espresso liner, and then I'm going over it with the MAC Mariah Carey Quad Espresso Shade because I'm kind of wanting to finish my very first MAC shade. I've never done it, and I think this could be a possibility of going through because I'm using it, like I said, in my outer corner in place of that black and then using it on my lash line and then on days that I don't want to wear the CoverGirl brow pencil, I can go on and throw that in my brows. One done easy and gives me a chance to use up some more shadows. So fun, fun times. Then on my lower lash line, what I was doing before is I was also taking this white smoke pencil again into my waterline to really give a brightening effect. Um, since I'm done with the purple look, I'm back to using just a basic nude pencil. This is from Maybelline, the um, Lasting Drama Waterproof Pencil in the shade Soft Nude. I'm kind of on the fence on how I feel about this because my eyes do water a little bit um, when I put this in the waterline and it doesn't necessarily stay for more than a couple of hours. I love this formula on my lower lash line, but in terms of a waterline, I don't know. I'll see how I feel in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna be going through with a nude pencil. And then on my lower lash line, I've been wearing purple and I used the shade Echo um, from my Kat Von D palette. So I really got a ton of use out of my Maybelline Lasting Drama Waterproof Pencil in the shade Polished Amethyst. In fact, this is the backup pencil um, that I started on because I finished the pencil prior. So I love, love, love this shade. But I really kind of wanted to step away from the purple in terms of the makeup. I'm wearing purple today, like how ironic is that but um I wanted to step away from the purple and wear blue for a while and so I pulled out my Maybelline um lasting drama waterproof pencil in the shade lustrous sapphire this is what I have going on on my lower lash line because I really want to use the shade dark wave which is a really intense um blue from the Kat Von D palette and then also um kind of blending things out I'm going through with analog and then I'm using the Strutter shade in my transition just to kind of talk about. But Pan That Palette is coming up, I believe, next week or the week after. So we'll kind of talk about the palette when we get to it at that point. Um, then in terms of, we've already talked about bronzer, blush. Last month I really got um, quite a bit of usage out of my Urban Decay uh, 8 Hour Powder Blush in the shade Bittersweet. This was a really fun shift. Instead of wearing like the pinks and the peaches and, you know, the 
the nude blushes it's like bright but it wasn't too bright it was really pretty with that kind of mauvey pewtery look so i highly recommend if you have a crazy shade like this in your collection bring it out there's so much fun to wear um i really just enjoyed this especially wearing the the shimmery white eyeshadow mixed with the lilac on my cheeks as a highlight it was a gorgeous glowy combination so Obviously, that's not going to work with red eyeshadow. It's a little too much. And so I've gone back into my favorite. Oh, this is so me in fall. My Clinique uh, Cheek Pop in the shade Cola Pop. I adore this blush. It is just goodness. <laughs> like absolute goodness in a compact. Although, thank you, Kara. After talking about what your husband said about the blushes looking like anuses, I cannot unsee that image <laughs> in my brain every time I open this up. So thank you, girl. Um, but it has been a lot of fun bringing this back out and wearing it. I am wearing it on my cheeks today. This blush is lovely on the cheeks. You can double it up as eyeshadow if you don't have a red eyeshadow in your collection. It's perfect for the fall right now. I love using this and blending it with oranges and peach and light browns. It's just, it's gorgeous. And blue, oh my goodness. Blues, purples, greens, you name it. This is a lovely color. And yes, it, it seems a little intimidating in the pan, but when it applies to the cheeks, you can make it very, very sophisticated and lovely without being clownish. So cannot, cannot wait to go on and use this. And at some point, I would like to, you know, get past the flower <laughs> design. I've owned this blush for like two and a half years and I've used it quite consistently in the fall and winter months and it's still like that design is there. It is it is so hard to hit pan in these clinic blushes, but I'm gonna try. I, I really do love it and I'm enjoying every second of using it. Um, then in terms of lip products, last month I really, I kind of went on different different things. I started off using berry lips like I talked about with the um, MAC Aaliyah kind of rebel rebel vibe if you're wanting a you know kind of see what the color looks like. Um, I did get a couple uses out of Revlon's Bombshell Red but like I said once I got into the swing of doing the hashtag it's been emotional project pan I actually reached for an entirely different lipstick out of my collection and that ended up being my Revlon lipstick in the shade Naughty Plum. This was just an easy, it's not on my lips but better shade, it's definitely cooler toned. It worked really well with that purple look but it just gave me an easy go to um, once I really got into all those purple vibes. So I mean I, I didn't start off the month wearing this but I kept going back into my makeup stash and I was like reaching for it and finally I just tossed it in my bag and this is what I wore for the majority of the month. You know, I'd put it on in the morning, I'd throw it in my purse and use it, throw it back in my makeup bag at night. So this is really what I ended up wearing for the month. Okay, my camera cut off for some reason, but this is the Clinique Lip Color Pop Lipstick in the shade Cola Pop to match along with that blush. This is one of my favorite lipsticks of all time and I really just, I wanna dedicate myself to using it for the month because I have owned this. It's one of my holy grails. I need to give it some love. And so this is the lip color I'm mainly going to be reaching for. But if I happen to want to matte finish the color that I'm going to be reaching, well, actually the lip liner I'm gonna be using, I want to finish off another MAC World lip liner. And I have a second one that I keep in my makeup bag. This one goes in my purse so that I have it on the go and I just transfer the lipstick back and forth. So I want to get through those two. And then if I want something else, I'm going to be reaching for the NYX uh, suede matte lipstick in the shade Girl Buy, and I have the lip liner. It has escaped me somehow, but I have the matching lip liner in Girl Buy as well. And this is just, it's kind of a similar vein of color. Not quite as burgundy, it's a little bit more mauve, but it's a beautiful color if I'm really just wanting a matte finish during the day. So here's what Girl Buy looks like from NYX, and I really enjoy the formula of these. They're fairly new. Um, to the drugstore and I just wanted something that was smooth and comfortable but still had that creamy matte finish because I really love matte lipsticks in the fall so but mainly it's going to be cola pop I, I just adore this color and you can wear it with a ton of different things like today I'm wearing it with purple I've worn it with navy with gray with browns with um orange kind of a pumpkin -y color burgundies um, reds, you name it. It's just, it's a very versatile color, even though it is quite intense and on the vampire side of you like a, a darker kind of fall vibe. So that's it. That wraps it up. 
Just to kind of give you a glimpse of my Lorac Mega Pro palette before we go, I didn't really get a whole lot of use out of it this past month, um, and I'm not going to be working with it for October because the colors I'm going to be focusing on out of my palette are going to be um, my version of Strutter. I've kind of mixed it a little bit where it's more like... Um, uh, noble where it's a little bit warmer um, and then I'm going to be going in for analog and dark wave and I think that was it out of this palette no I thought I had three. Oh, I don't know I don't know there's a couple of shades I'm using the orange the blue and the strutter I think that's it and then the rest of it I'm pulling from the peach from the sugar pop palette and then the rewind shades so that's kind of where I'm going with my eyeshadow but in terms of my Lorac Mega Pro palette um, like I mentioned, I didn't use this a whole ton. I did make a little bit of a Franken shadow. I mixed, uh, you know, the teeniest little bit of apricot mixed with harpsichord that I um, uh, flattened into my Lorac Pro Pal or Lorac Pro 2. It was just kind of a couple of uses to see if I'd like the shade because I'm kind of thinking of doing a look kind of a rose gold lilac -y vibe to kind of get through these shades and that way it gives me use for harpsichord lightened up with lilac a little bit. I did use this Franken shadow I made in the indigo pot. It's a mix of um, an Inglot shadow and some Too Faced shadows and a little bit of echo from my um, Kat Von D palette. Not a ton where you'd really notice a lot of progress, but I did get a couple of uses out of it. And then I also used Merlot a handful of times because I did have a berry look that I liked, but it was one of those things that after a couple of days I was ready to kind of move on. And you know, since I had a project pan going at the time, um, I really just wanted to focus and, and guarantee that I was going to make some progress with that. So, but this is a current look at kind of where I am with my palette. If you were curious to see how it's kind of coming along, I don't know if I'm going to finish it before the end of the year. We'll see. You know, at this point, I am satisfied with anything that I'm able to pull out and use and enjoy. And, and I'm really enjoying jumping around my makeup collection. It's nice to have that. Um, solid look that I can reach for, but at the same time, uh, you know, know and, and love um, kind of moving around other things. So I hope that you have just as much fun shopping your stash. I hope that this video brings you a little bit of inspiration and some motivation for some fall makeup. So be on the lookout. I do have, um, I'm actually kind of inspired to do a Huda Beauty um, inspired get ready with me kind of focused around the green jewel tone palette because I have a ColourPop shadow I want to get some use out of. And then do my best to get a little bit more use out of some more of the blues and the teals out of this palette because I have to admit that they're the most challenging for me to definitely incorporate. So that about wraps it up for now, but I hope that you have a fabulous rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you soon. So see you later.